Time for another Ecuador Q&A. Are there bus passes and are there senior discounts in any of these areas of expense? This is a question made in reference to my cost of living video. In a city like Cuenca, there is a bus card which gives students and seniors a 50% discount whenever they use the bus. Also, you can get certain discounts on certain services if you're a senior citizen, but these services have to be in your name. This means if you're renting, then of course the price isn't going to depend on you, but the owner of the property and the deal you made with that owner. So definitely make sure you talk that over with the landlord or the owner before you rent any property. Any chance you can do a video that includes the name and info of these frequent traveler businesses that will bring your purchased items from the US to Ecuador. This is in reference to a point I made in a video where if you wanna get things brought over from the States or any other country, you typically go through a friend or a service that generally these people, they go to the States or they go to a different country, they buy things and they ask you if you want anything and they give you a certain price for each object you want them to bring. The thing about the people who do this kind of service is that if you want to know who does it in each and every city, it would probably be impossible to get the information on each and every person. This is not only due to the fact that I'd have to ask around each city to see who's doing this service, but also because most people who do this service, they don't do it for very long. Some do it for a few months and then they don't do it anymore. This would make it difficult to get a reliable list of people who offer this kind of service all around the country. Currently, I do have a friend though that's been doing this service long term and he's even set up his own store here in Puerto Viejo where he sells some of the items that he brings back. Obviously not the ones that people have ordered, but items that he's brought in order to sell. You can be the judge to whether these prices are fair, but realize that no matter what, anything that is brought back is always going to be marked up in some way, shape or form. Aside from this, there is one interesting thing though. Recently, a company has started a similar service to what these people are doing with going to the States and bringing back items. This company is called Larbox and two of my friends have been using this service a lot. I'll give a more detailed explanation and review once I try the service out myself, but it's basically similar to the frequent travelers, except that this service, this company, is located in various parts of Ecuador. So subscribe and stay tuned for a future video where I test this service out myself. I plan to study abroad in Ecuador, but I'm curious about what I should wear. If I wore Jordans or Tims, would I get robbed? I am from Chicago and typically I wear jeans with some nice shoes. I know over here you can get robbed for wearing Jordans if you're in an area you don't know. So my question is, should I just leave all that name brand stuff home? It's a very good question. The easy answer is that the majority of the time, clothing itself won't be the reason that you get robbed. It would honestly have to be some incredibly flashy clothing, like having jewelry or almost literal glow in the dark clothing for you to get robbed for your clothing. Or alternatively, my friend Arlette said that you'd have to be wearing work clothes or have a really obvious and conspicuous backpack that shows that you have money. In those cases, then yeah, maybe your clothing will get you robbed. The more detailed answer is that there are a multitude of things that you can do that could fuse together that could increase your chances of getting robbed. Let's take a look at some of them right now. On the lowest level, if you're just wearing jeans and the Tims and just walking to the university, then your chances of getting robbed are really low, probably around only 10%, which is probably the lowest of chances that you're going to get robbed here in Ecuador. Except of course, if you're at home, in which case your chances of getting robbed are from zero to 1%, and there's nothing lower than that. Now, what if you're wearing those same jeans and Tims and walking around the same area, but this time you're using an iPhone. And not only are you using it, you're super distracted by it, you're focused on it, and you're not paying attention to anything around you. In that case, you just tripled your chances of getting robbed from 10% to 30%. Now, what about if you're walking around with all these things, same area, but you're doing it at around 10 p.m. or later? Well, I'd say you just raise your chances of getting robbed to around 50% or higher. But what if you're doing all these things 
on a frequent or daily basis. Like maybe this is your third, fourth, or fifth time that you're walking in that area at that time, wearing those things with that phone in your hand, then what are your chances of getting robbed? I'd say you just shot your chances up to around 70% or higher. But why did your chances just shoot up to 70%? Well, now the robbers know your routine. They know where you're coming and going, so they have a definite plan to be able to rob you. And what if you went to this desolate place that everyone told you not to go while doing all the things I've mentioned up to this point? Well, at that point, you're just asking to get robbed and your chances of actually getting robbed are probably about 90 to 100%. With all of this, I do want you to remember that nothing is guaranteed but you can certainly lower or raise your chances of something happening depending on what you decide to do. What city on the coast is best for shore fishing and diving? Well, as someone who doesn't necessarily partake in these activities, I did have to ask around for the answer to this question. My friend Maria Jose, who is a real estate agent and she's been featured on this channel, mentioned that she did snorkeling. Not exactly diving, but snorkeling in Jaramijo. She did it around this area called El Muelle, which is the dock in English. She also mentioned you can do diving in Salango. There you can take a tour with diving included, or you can rent a boat and some gear and they'll take you to an islet. Another diving location that was mentioned by her and someone on Reddit is Puerto Lopez which is interesting due to its access to La Isla de Plata. Apparently this island is the supposed Galapagos of the coast, so it's definitely worth checking out, but you do need a licensed guide in order to do activities there. So keep that in mind. Maria Jose was kind enough to send me an Instagram page with all kinds of diving tours. So make sure to check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description. As for shore fishing, Maria Jose didn't have any recommendations, unfortunately, but on Reddit, three places were mentioned, and those three places were Salinas, Manta, and Puerto Lopez. One comment mentioned that you can shore fish as long as you have the equipment, and you don't need a permit to do so. As for specific locations, that's something I'd have to be there in person to ask around for, when I'm not injured, of course. But with this for now, you have a general idea of where to look. And if this video has been informative in general, then don't forget to give it a like. Robberies are really that frequent throughout the whole country? I hoped it'd mainly just be in Guayaquil. Well, what can I tell you? I'd hope it were happening nowhere in the country, but here we are. Really, my answer to this question is very similar to the answer with the clothing. It's really about as frequent as you make it with the obvious factor of uncertainty and RNG, or luck if you will. Some cities such as Guayaquil are clearly more dangerous, but you certainly aren't doing yourself any favors by walking around with an iPhone or any phone in your hand. But keep in mind, even in a city like Guayaquil, you're not guaranteed to get robbed. One of my Swiss friends actually went to Guayaquil and nothing bad happened to her. And she said it was just like a big city to her. Was she alone? No. Did she put herself at risk by going to dangerous areas late at night? No. Could something have happened to her? Of course, that's the uncertainty or RNG factor right there. We really don't know exactly how robbers work. Like robbers could just be sitting around one day and say, hey, let's go to X street at Y time. And you just happen to be walking by X street at Y time and well, Guess who's getting robbed? So the best thing you can do for yourself is to make sure you're not carrying around anything that you're afraid to lose. Or just be careful whenever you go out. Cuenca, Mindo, Baños, obviously Galapagos. Those cities are generally much safer places. Do I recommend you not to take precautions? Heck no. Always be prepared for anything. Can I get a job in Ecuador? I'm from Ghana, AC technician from Ghana. Oh boy. The easy answer is you probably could, but it's not guaranteed. The more complicated answer is that it's going to depend on a ton of things. First of all, I don't think I would be able to tell you if someone is hiring an AC technician because unfortunately I'm not an AC technician myself. 
the majority of jobs that I get offered are teaching jobs. And even then, it's not like I'm offered jobs on a daily basis. And remember, it's not as simple as me getting offered a job because I am a teacher, but more because I am well known in the teaching space. So I get recommended a lot. What I'm trying to say is that if you come here as a new person with no recommendations from the people here at all, then you're probably gonna have a very hard time finding a job here in Ecuador. That is unless your resume is something out of this world, in which case, well, you have a much better shot. Not guaranteed, but a much better shot. And the recommendation that my friend Arlette gave is to make sure you already have a job secured before you come to Ecuador. That way you're not over here wasting time and money. 10 to $20? We have been told $30 per day, which we pay our painters and tile guys. Same with the landscaper and the maid. Are we misinformed? Let's talk about this. So this question relates to how much you pay a person who helps you around the house with, you know, extra services, such as like a handyman or maybe a maid. The most generic amount that I hear that people pay for these services is around $20. That's not too high and it's not insultingly low either. I've also heard people say $10 which in my opinion is horribly low, and be prepared to pay the consequences for paying a price that low. And what I mean by consequences for paying that low is that you know if you're paying a low price for a service like that, you can't expect perfect results. But even worse than that is the possibility that if the service is, you know, cleaning your house or something, that the person doing it, the maid or whoever's doing that service, might get frisky with your personal belongings and they might just disappear, if you know what I mean. It's not guaranteed, of course, and I'm not saying that all people are terrible, but don't put it past someone to do something like that is all I'm saying. $30 does seem like a gringo price though, unless you have the biggest house or the biggest lawn in the world, in which case it might be justified. Someone I know in Quito and we are talking about Quito, a relatively expensive city in Ecuador, says that they wouldn't pay more than $20 to have their place cleaned. Over here in Puerto Viejo, I asked around and the general prices that I heard are anywhere from 10 to $15. And of course, you could always ask the person who's working for you how much they want to get paid or how much they should get paid. But in that case, you're a little bit more likely to get gringoed. But remember, in the end, you can choose how much you want to pay, as long as the person accepts it, of course. And if you wanna pay $30, then I get it, it's fine. And what I mean by that is that I look at it from the perspective of someone coming from a country where maybe these services are very expensive. So paying 20, 30, maybe even more, might not seem like a lot of money. But of course, you have to have a lot of money in order to pay a lot for these services, especially considering here, people don't normally charge you that much for these services. So the choice is on you. Also, if you wanna check out more answers to your questions, make sure to check out this Q&A video next or join me on my live streams where I answer your questions live. Consider becoming a channel member to get answers to your comments quicker or just to say thanks for the content. Make sure you take care, come to Ecuador prepared, and as always, ace out.